Let's read a project into Sherlock. What I'm going to do is go up to project here and I'm going to import an ODB archive. I'm going to click browse. I'm going to browse to my C drive, programs x86, DFR solutions, Sherlock, tutorials, and look for this ODB++ tutorial.tgz file. You should also have this file and it's located where your Sherlock is installed. I'm going to select this file and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it project123 and also name my circuit card. After that, I'm going to click scan archive. Sherlock's going to go through and look for PRP fields to map them. We can just leave them as default and click OK. This next screen here shows us what Sherlock's found and shows us what Sherlock's going to do when we select import archive down the bottom here. We're going to create a new project, add a circuit card, add all of our properties and stack up data and package data, as well as add all of these layers that Sherlock's found as well. So our copper layers, our solder mask layers, our drill hole files, for instance. Click import archive and you can see immediately here in the task monitor, it's showing us that Sherlock is reading in that ODB archive. And as it reads through, you actually get a status as well as some notes here to tell you if that read has been successful or not. You also would have noticed that on this left panel here, this project panel, Sherlock's populated a project with all of the files that it's read in, and you can see them here on the left. Once it's read in, you can see that all the files here appear under this files tab. So we've got our pick and place files, our copper layer files, as well as our other layer files, so drill holes, silk screens, and solder masks for the top and bottom. This project here is completely open, so you can see this arrow is pointing down with all of the contents in here. At the moment, I only have one project, so you'll only see this one project. But if you're working with multiple projects or have worked with multiple projects, this project's tree on the left here will be populated with all the different projects that you've opened in Sherlock. To ensure that you don't accidentally click on the wrong thing or change something in another project, it's good practice after finishing with a project to right click and selecting close project. Once you've closed that project, you can't open it again until you open project, which means that while it's closed, nothing can be edited or changed. While I'm in this right click menu here, you can also see some other options. We've got our projects property, which I can right click in, and there's a text field here where I can put my descriptions, so I can type whatever I'd like in here. I can put my notes to self, I can also put notes to my colleagues if I have multiple people that will be working on this project. So we can keep track of everything uh, in relation to this project. And all this metadata gets carried along with the project. I can also export this project once I'm done working with it or if I want to send it to someone else. So if I right click and select export project, you'll see here that we can export the project as a whole and I can choose what files uh, I choose to export with this project. I can select them all or I can be selective and not uh, export all of my data. And then I can obviously choose my location and the naming of the project that I'm exporting here. Once I've exported it, the next time I want to open it on another machine or one of my colleagues wants to open it, they can go up to project, import a project and import that, uh, that zipped archive. Uh, some other options in this uh, right-click menu of the project is I can add circuit cards or import existing circuit cards onto this project. You'll see that because I read in an ODB archive, Sherlock automatically created a circuit card for me as well with all of its containing files. But I can have multiple circuit cards be part of one project, and that is how I would add them. I can clear my project results. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, clicking collapse will collapse it back up uh, so that it's not shown in this expanded view and I can also show the location of my project so the working directory of that file. 